sounded like a Stan Freeberg commercial. If anybody knows Stan Freeberg. Uh, but now I'm going to go look him up. Um, so the first item on the agenda is oral communications. Have we received any speaker cards from members of the public? <coughs> nope. So we'll roll right into action items. Item number one is staff's second follow-up response to the inventory management audit. Um, and this was something that we'd asked um, to see back six months after the initial meeting and then we've pushed it off a couple of times because I wanted to make sure that all members of the finance committee were able to be here for it. So uh, here we are and I imagine staff has a report. Uh, yes, we do. Thank you, Sir Berman. Thank you. Um, and thank you for uh, clarifying that point because we wanted to make sure you knew that we were uh, ready to go after the <laughs> six month. Uh, um, <clears throat> this was obviously a very important item to the committee and uh, you did something that you typically don't do, which is ask for staff to come back uh, prior to the auditor doing the annual update. And um, we recognize the importance, uh, not that we didn't before, but to emphasize uh, the priority on how we address the issues that were identified. Um, I, we're gonna start you at a high level and give you an overview uh, but we're more than willing to get into the details if that's where you want to go in terms of the specific audits. What I wanted to do is uh, maybe give you a quick overview of where we're at. Uh, staff will tell you from each of the departments that participated in the process what they're doing and what changes they have made. I feel that we're making good progress. You will see later on in our presentation that we've addressed about 80% of the recommendations. Uh, we're working closely uh, with the large departments, meaning my department, with the large departments being public works, utilities, and, and IT in terms of what was identified in the audit. One thing that we did a little bit different in our approach, and it was uh, in collaboration with the city auditor's office, was to take this to a, a higher level. Uh, in the audit, it really focused on very specific areas such as public works utilities and IT as I mentioned and what we want to do is we want to get this out citywide because we felt that it was important to get everybody in the same on the same page so that's one of the things that uh, we are working on as well to try to make this a, a citywide process so when we're talking about the 80 percent accomplishment we're talking to the areas that were identified in the audit Beyond that, we're still working on those areas uh, that we identified ourselves. Um, <clears throat> there were, can we go to the prior slide? Yes. There were, there were four areas that we felt were the key uh, to the audit report uh, or the overriding themes, if you will. Uh, the need for policy and procedures to be communicated, and as I mentioned, we added citywide, uh, and uh, we need to do some training and outreach for all of the areas, not just the significant departments. Uh, we feel that we are in a better position for the clarification of roles and responsibilities. It's going to take a little bit of time to make those changes, but we're, we're well on our way. Uh, we have commitments from the department heads and their respective staff behind me that we're going to collaboratively work on continuing to implement the new changes and um, hold ourselves responsible for those changes. We believe that this will add to the greater accountability as a result of that. Uh, we are in a better place in terms of tracking materials outside of the system. And that was a big point of contention I think that we needed to address. Um, <clears throat> and again, we're going beyond the audit on this. We want to also uh, talk about the slow moving and the obsolete stock. I think we can do a better job of presenting to you uh, why we have some stock that is not moving and, 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 and explain to you uh, what the process of the identification of those materials was and then explain the, the turnover for the inventory. We have addressed the physical security of the assets. I uh, went out to the warehouse and saw the I'll call it the cage, if you will, where we have our uh, <coughs> IT equipment. And it it's a massive gate that goes from floor to ceiling. There's no way to get in there unless you have a, a key access card. So we'll get into a lot more details about the specifics of that. Um, 
but I, I wanted to highlight that that was uh, something important to us and we made the changes as soon as uh, feasible. What I'd like to do now is turn the presentation over to Joe Sasho, our assistant director in ASD, who along with Nancy Nagel, a senior management analyst, uh, took the lead and worked with the other departments to prepare the responses for tonight. Thanks all. Uh Um, before I proceed with the slides, um, we do have changes, which is at your places, to one of the documents that was in the CMR. And this is uh, the uh, detailed revised inventory management implementation plan. So uh, if you look at your handout uh, that was at places, um, the first change is a language change on number five, the, all the change three of the changes are uh, underlined, so they're easily identifiable. Um, we put in identified in the audit, all inventory identified in the audit. We'll comment wh what we mean by that I'll just a little bit later. Um, and then um, we have changed one of the dates on number 10 in the middle column. We m moved it from 1031 to 1231.14 and um, explain a little bit of that later why. As well as number 13, um, we moved that same during the for the same time frame. Um, we inadvertently left out one um, item that was in the CMR plan, but not in this one, and um, it's a very important one that we also will speak to. And if you can look at your CMR, I'll I'll read it. It is number 15 in the CMR that was omitted from the one it places. It's called Determined Steps and Resources, including staff, needed to implement the updated policies, process, and procedures. So that's an important part of our implementation plan. We also want to thank the auditors for s insisting on an implementation plan, which I'm sure is, you know, it's an excellent idea and something that you, we can all benchmark and get our hands around and, and work towards. So I'm going to go um, a little bit more on overall progress. As Lalo mentioned, all the usual suspects, and I don't mean those who <laughs> police department, but all the people who are here, are here who are going to be responsible for this. These are the folks who've participated in from utilities, public works, IT, as well as ASD, and they're all in the audience, some of whom will speak to some of these slides. So if you're unhappy with anything, you, you know who to ID <coughs> or, or pinpoint. Uh, so, uh, this is now slide four, where you see we took a, a rough guesstimate. We think we're 80% done. done given how much time we've spent on this and we'll explain that there are some things that we can't evaluate until we've implemented. So that's the first task that's been completed. Uh, the citywide creates citywide policies and procedures and we think they're at the a, a part of the attachments to your CMR. We think they are very good in the sense of their their clear, um, they assign responsibilities and roles, mention the steps that need to be taken in managing inventory. So um, we've, we've spent a lot of, t lot of time on that. Cross-departmental communication, um, we, again, all the positions that are responsible for managing inventory from, you know, ingress to egress are, um, are identified. Um, we have point people that in our warehouse any questions about any inventory. They have a person, identifiable person in utilities, for instance. <coughs> Is it on? Oh, you want me to? I, I might mistake it for an ice cream cone at some point. <laughs> um, but um, we have identified. <laughs> you're worried? Yeah, you know. Hopefully it's non toxic. Um, so. Uh, we have identified specific people with specific responsibilities, 
and um, I don't think there'll be any hesitancy that if there's lack of cooperation or anything or you know that we would we're going to not be hesitant to kind of bump it up to resolve issues um, we have um, I think last time we met with you, you were very concerned about tracking materials. Um, and we have relied on existing systems and, and um, outside of SAP and SAP to track stock. If um, part of the to-dos, the 20%, um, will be to evaluate the adequacy of those and maybe move more items into SAP that need to be that need to be tracked. We're going to take a look at that. Um, and some, for example, we're going to be looking at transformers are going to not be tracked through SAP, um, but through an existing access system, and they may well be moved to SAP. And the department utilities department will evaluate that. But we think that it's adequate, very adequate at this point in time. We have taken a serious look at obsolete materials. Uh, anything that is obsolete, cannot be used, cannot be even scrapped, it's been surplus. We've all, we would also try to use goods for scrap that have scrap, scrap value. So a serious look has been, um, we've given a serious look to items that are over three years old and items that are over one year old to make sure that um, what is on the shelves is useful and and can be used in in the future so we've taken a look at that we've also looked at inventory levels to make sure that um and departments have have um our uh, manager over at the msc warehouse sent out reports and collaborated with the departments to assess those inventory levels the mins and the max the max levels we are going to send out quarterly reports um, on inventory turnover and reports where slow moving stock can be identified and discussed. And if it's slow moving and unused, we're, we're going to take action on that. As Lalo mentioned, we've improved physical security. Um, he's already mentioned some of, some of the things, and Public Works will, will speak to that. We have cages. We have reduced the number of ac people who can access the warehouse from almost, almost in half, not quite. Um, and we have introduced cameras and a card system over at the uh, water quality control plant. So that's been improved. I hope I'm not taking their thunder. I may, I may you know, so oh well. Um, so what, what do we have left to do? Um, we really, before we distributed these PP and P's, we wanted to make sure that the, we wanted your input um, just to make sure that they are, um, meet with your approval, um, although quite detailed, but we just wanted a little bit of time to implement them in case there are any changes. But we tend to send those out on the 31st and everybody to comply with them after the 31st. We did look at um, new technical solutions or new technology. Um, we've passed on that um, to some extent. Um, we've discussed using RFID. Um, we've, you know, right now we think um, SAP is more more than adequate. Um, and uh, in addition to that, we're looking at new ERP. IT is looking at new ERP systems. So um, we thought it best to. Um, uh, not full with SAP, SAP and a, 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 so we, we've we've left that aside. Um, we do think for additional staffing needs because we've inserted controls, more reports, but we wanted to wait to see how everything we've um, implement are going to implement works and to see whether we do need additional resources. For example, if we have quarterly reports and counts and things like that and you want to do due diligence and we want to have, um, we may need somebody to go out and check on the counts that have been done by the, by the departments. Um, we also may need some, uh, this is number 12, some additional space. I think we mentioned last time that the water quality control plant um, warehouse is, in my view anyway, completely inadequate for the amount of stuff that's out there, to use a technical term. Um, and. Um, process additional utility materials. So we also have found out towards the end of the audit there are additional materials in the MSC that we need to look at and go through a similar process of determining what can be returned to stores, what's obsolete. 
et cetera. Yes. Can I add a couple of things sure. that I think it's important for the committee to hear? We work with best practices. That was our goal, to implement best practices wherever possible. And moreover, there we identified an area where <coughs> there could be an exception. We're going to customize the procedures for that area. Example, water quality control plan. We have an emergency. We're not going to go and fill out the form or go into the system. The staff is going to go get the piece of equipment they need and go and address it. And we'll identify the exception after the fact. Uh, if there's an area where there's no way to implement dual controls, dual controls when you have segregation of duties, we'll identify that area and state why. So uh, we want to assure you that part of our review and our process with each of the departments was to look at best practices and, and start from there. And if there needed to be an exception, to work with the department to identify those exceptions and, and, and put them in place. Um, and uh, so I wanted to make sure that uh, you understood that part of our process. Yes, um, there's an awful low raise real. There's a lot of information attached to this report, and Nancy did a really thorough job bringing it all together. And what I mean by that is, you know, you'll see that there's response to the audit in terms of best practices, GA, General, governmental accounting office, et cetera, that, you know, we're not going to discuss. We're trying to discuss this at a fairly high level, but you should know that. So, um, the auditor, uh, going to slide five, the auditor emphasized the need for inventory policy direction for all departments. We feel like we have done that through the policies uh, and the procedures, and we are, they've already been shared with the departments, and so they, we've had chance for input, and we're going to be circulating those. Um, we also um, will be doing any training that's necessary with SAP reports that departments may need, as well as reviewing um, the procedures. And I have to say, it, this is, in, in many instances, this is going to represent change for, um, for, for a lot of folks in terms of how business is, is done. So, um, so we do need to do some training. Um, so we have utilities here, IT and public works, and they're going to be um, just very briefly, unlike me, going through the rest of the slides. Um, I guess I should just address the first one, um, which is on slide six on electric meters. Um, there's going to be a forthcoming audit presented on meters. So this report and our activity um, are bypassing that because there's a much more complete audit, thorough audit from the audit coming from the auditor's office. So that's the reason why um, uh, it's being given, um, you know, short shrift, so to speak, at least at this meeting. So with Okay, I just wanted to actually make a few brief comments here, um, really um, telling you all that we are very committed um, to safeguarding and managing our inventories. We agree with the audit recommendations. We've made both minor and major changes throughout the organization. Um, we've improved our controls through forms, through workflow processes, through authorizations. We've improved security um, of our inventory through um, really limiting and restricting access to only those who are authorized um, <coughs> and, and locking up some of the inventories. And um, we've provided and continue to provide our employees with more SAP training. Um, and um, most importantly, we've improved all of our coordination and communications, both inter and intra department. Um, I've also asked uh, senior um, management analyst Dave Yen <laughs> to uh, address more specifically some of the findings of the audit. It's required you actually be able to see that. Tiny little glitch up, not on the pointy part. Good evening. 
So as Joe mentioned, the meters are subject to a separate audit. So we're going to be talking about that later. And that's going to be covering not just the electric meters, but also the gas, water, and electric meters. And that's supposed to be done by December of this year. Um, for utility poles, we have about 6,000 throughout the city and about 150 in inventory. These poles are ordered and tracked in SAP. However, due to the size of the poles, they're anywhere from 35 to 85 feet long. They are stored and delivered at a substation. So we do count them every quarter and we do reconcile them against the inventory that's in SAP. For transformers, we have about 3,000 transformers and about 400 in inventory. And the reason we have 400 in inventory is because of the long lead time. Sometimes it takes up to 12 months to get a transformer and because of all the different sizes and configurations. Um, the transformers are ordered via SAP. They're stored on the racks in the back of the MSC yard. But as Joe mentioned earlier, they're tracked in Access instead of SAP. And the reason we use Access is because it gives us more fields, like um, you know, a better way of managing the transformers. It allows us to track the serial numbers, the voltage, oil requirement, the physical dimensions, and our testing results, and uh, where the poles, how we're located on the poles. The, transfer, the transformer information is also stored in the GIS and SCADA systems for outage management, and they're counted monthly and reconciled to the access database. And finally, the north dock, that's kind of where our truck stock is. That's where our rotating parts. So we have connectors, so we have like 6,000 connectors, 4,000 nails, service wires, washers, bolts, and fuses. These are things we use on a regular basis. These are our crews for our construction and also maintenance. We also have emergency parts in there, like conductors, clamps, and brackets. Um, so the actions that we've taken so far since the audit, we've improved our security and control. We've installed a card access door, restricted the access only to the supervisors, the leads, the linemen, and the warehouse personnel. We've also improved our coordination between engineering, operations, stores, and purchasing, making sure that we don't overorder or underorder parts, and make sure we're always in contact when standards change. Um, we're also coordinated with ASD and the other departments on the policies and procedures, and we all agree with the new policies. And we are providing employees new training as needed, making reservations and ordering as needed. And that's all I have for now. Do you have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, and I have a question. Sure. Um, in the uh, utility polls, there are 600 citywide, but 150 in, in, on stock, and that's 25%. That seems like pretty heavy. 6,000. Oh, 6,000. I misunderstood that. Sorry. That makes more sense. <laughs> so we're going to assume I'm wrong on that. You didn't misstate it. I'm happy to be that way. Um, <laughs> and that, that makes more sense than because it's <clears throat> 3,000 transformers and 400 in, in inventory. That makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah, it's like 3% in inventory for the <clears throat> poles and like 10% for transformers. Okay, and then the other thing is the persons that have access, are there contractors that also are granted access or not? Is it all city no, employees? No, it's all city employees now. Okay, okay, good. Public Works is also gonna give you a little more information on, on the access and changes to control it, uh, to the facility that we made as well. Okay, good, thanks. Yeah, to be clear, we really had to justify who we thought should have access and it's pretty much the crews who have to respond, particularly during emergencies. With that, I think we have IT. Um, Lisa Bolger is going to talk to what has been done with IT equipment. I'm I'm short. It'll be kind. IT. Hi. Page seven. No. Very well. Don't worry. We have twenty-five percent of our mics in. <laughs> I, uh, Lisa Bolger, IT Chief of Staff, and first of all, I just wanted to thank um, the Auditor's Office for providing a great uh, detailed um, report. It gives us an opportunity to really show some improvements and efficiency gains, so um, we're happy to be able to participate in this. Um, we really had three key areas that we were looking at. Um, our inventory tends to move very quickly um, because we have a lot of needs and um, when it relates to computer equipment, generally it's moving pretty fast. It's not stagnant. 
Um, but first off, we wanted to ensure that we had a secured cage out at the store's warehouse. Um, that has been done in conjunction with work with Public Works as well as the MSC staff. Um, it's a, as Joe had mentioned previously, it's a cage um, to the ceiling with badge access only. Um, stores warehouse staff only have access to it. Um, and currently, in terms of controls, um, only six people within, uh, six staff members within IT can ask or make reservations for any of the non stock or non valuated stock items um, that are in SAP. Um, so the secure cage um, has worked out well for us, and um, no other uh, staff outside of store staff have access to it. The other improvement was um, identifying uh, full process and procedures working with uh, MSC staff and the store's warehouse supervisor. Um, we currently now have fully documented um, procedures for how to make reservations, how to ensure that we have material masters in um, SAP, and really leveraging SAP um, for inventory management and controls. Um, and then lastly, um, really trying to leverage SAP to its potential. Um, we've had the opportunity to uh, put in any um, um, stock items that are valued at over $100. Um, that was a threshold that seemed reasonable. Um, and all of those items are now in SAP um, for any items that are generally purchased on a regular basis. So that includes anywhere from laptops, computers, monitors, docking stations. Um, as it stands right now, we have 100 uh, laptops in inventory with 30 monitors. Again, it's moving fast. We have a lot of requests, a lot of demands. So that, that product moves very, very quickly. Um, so um, in closing, with these improvements, we feel that the um, equipment and IT assets that are in stock um, are properly secured. Um, they're properly monitored now, and we can actually um, have better safeguards in place for ensuring that we know what inventory levels look like and be able to report on that at any given time now that that information is in SAP. With that, I'll take any questions. I just want to go backwards slightly because when we were discussing the large number of access cards at MSC, we actually didn't get an answer on that, and we thought you were going to do that, but that's not your issue. Uh, right, that's coming up in the that's part of the presentation. That's still coming up. Okay, good. So, and your, num your number was four? Was we have six. Six that have, that have that access. Not access to the cage. Um, we actually have no access to the cage. Uh, stores, warehouse staff only do. We have six people who can only make a reservation that have access to making reservations and receiving equipment. So, so, Vice Mayor, there are sort of two layers of access. One is to the whole facility, the, the warehouse, um, which is where we had an excessive number originally of access cards yeah, and that went down to the for low 40. And then we have another access card to go into the cage, which is located within. Thank you. I'm Jamie Allen, the Public Works Department's manager for the city's wastewater treatment plant. <coughs> the plant participated in developing the policy process and procedures with ASD, and we also supported additional security at the water quality control plant warehouse. Uh, and one improvement we made was for non-valuated emergency repair parts, so per parts that had already been uh, purchased for emergencies and they've been expensed and the plant mechanics and electricians spent many months reviewing the stock on hand and inventorying these parts they were stored around the plant in seven steel storage boxes and two large towers uh, in the basement uh, formerly these emergency repair parts were tracked in an Excel spreadsheet and we weren't updating it very often mm -hmm. so now we're checking these parts in and out of stock in SAP as non-valuated stock and we're going to be conducting annual blind cycle counts of this inventory and reconciling it with the list uh, with ASD. Uh, the next improvement we're making is moving the water quality control plant warehouse from open style warehouse to a closed style warehouse. Um, with the open style warehouse that we've, we've had all these years, 
uh, the electricians, mechanics, and the operators find what they need amongst the aisles, um, and they check out their items on paper um, under the watch of a storekeeper, of course. And that's similar to finding what you need at the store and going through the cashier and the, the storekeepers again to the cashier. But with the clothes, we're moving towards the clothes warehouse where a reservation will be made in SAP and the storekeeper will be the person pulling the parts. And then after hours during emergencies, uh, a supervisor will be the person pulling the parts. And um, we're going to be monitoring the change because it's a big behavioral change at the plant. We're monitoring the impacts on work outputs and productivity and seeing, uh, working with ASD to see what's needed. And um, there may be additional resources needed to, f to move to a fully closed warehouse, such as an additional storekeeper, or perhaps another maintenance staff member. But um, we are making this improvement to move towards a closed warehouse. That's all I had. I think Jamie's raising a really key point. We've tried to do as much as we can with an existing staffing levels and insert more controls where possible, but we really need to assess the need for additional staffing if some of, and we want to assess the costs and benefits of that so that, um, so we're leaving it really to a little bit later to see the impact. Very important to understand, just to reemphasize. Oh, no, we have for the no. Yeah, because John's going to do the security. Um, I think we have turnover next. Yeah. And then we're going to go to security. Okay. Do they have any questions for me? Let me, do, let me just, sure. because a couple of times now, Joe, you've mentioned more staff, like three times. And um, I, I think when you get to that point and you're saying, well, wait and see, we'll wait and see. I, I want to hear some really good justification for that because as I'm seeing it, you're doing more and more of the SAP and that control mechanism, which I would think would be saving personnel time rather than needing more. But I'm just calling it out because you have. You don't need to give an answer yet, but okay. since well, you have put it out there several times, uh, when we get to that point, I'd, I'd like to hear. Uh, sure. I, I think this is a good time to do it, uh, yeah. Vice Mayor, because it's an important component. Um, it, th this is just a fact. I'm not criticizing the having the internal audit at all, so I don't want it to be misunderstood. But we get hundreds of recommendations that come out annually uh, from the auditor's office. And that is an administrative step. And it's important to, to acknowledge what does that mean. When you have more controls, you need more manual intervention and system intervention. So that's critical. What we were doing before, to put it bluntly, is we were having informal processes to manage our assets to, to move materials quickly and get to jobs. Now we're not doing that. We're going through steps that you have to have documented steps, you have to have items in the system, you have to pull things out of the system and request them and log them out. And so all of that is adding additional manual steps and electronic inputs and electronic outputs. And people watching and people watching and monitoring. Because now that you know Val told you what she's going to do, we're going to come back and do spot checks. Are you doing what you said you were going to do? The same to Jamie. The same to IT. The same to ourselves for our own warehouse. So all of those add additional steps. Another thing that is. Uh, not necessarily to Jamie here, but uh, in, uh, he can give you more concrete examples. The same people that are managing the warehouse and uh, having to uh, add these steps that they weren't doing before are the same people that move the books from libraries to libraries. And what are we doing? We're expanding the libraries. We're expanding the collection. We're expanding the possibility of people moving books from one <laughs> library to another. So right now, a citizen can go and ask for a book at one library to be uh, delivered to another library to be picked up or dropped off at a different library. It's, these are the same people that are doing all of that. So all of these extra additional steps become a cum cumulative impact. So we don't want to come out and tell you right now it's absolutely necessary because we want to go through the assessment. We're implementing the steps. We're at the infancy of implementation, if you will. So, but we want to be honest with you in our concern that in order to ensure that we put these controls in place that we believe in, uh, we need to do an assessment and, and then come back to you after that. 
same topic. Um, I hear what you're saying at the same time. I've always thought that, and my experience has been that efficiency, excuse me, that organization is more efficient. And so I'm not quite tracking yet why it would take more people, even though there are some more steps. It seems like, but you know where things are, you know really where your inventory is, because before we didn't, we weren't tracking it. So how did we know if we had it? And so it, it, it still seems like there's a, to me, it seems like there's a non sequitur in terms of needing yeah. staff. So I'm with, I'm with Vice Mayor on, you know, when you come back, if there's a request for more staff, it really needs to be outlined specifically um, and clearly. Can I, can I have something? I, obviously, I don't mind. We're necessarily coming back here for a request for more staff, but I think when we look at next year's budget, those are some of the things when we come to finance we'll have to look at. And I think one of the things that we should think about is a request for what are the best practices that exist in the world that um, apply increasing levels of accountability and oversight and reporting and systems changes along with all the other expanding initiatives. We're not a static organization that is just maintaining things and just improving our practice of maintaining things. We're also growing. Uh, we're moving into new business areas all of the time. Um, I, I'm going to ask the staff to bring forward some best practice analyses that show how, w one, when you're in an organizational setting with this degree of reporting and oversight, who does it without necessarily needing additional resources? How is it that you have more reporting and accountability and review and transparency with existing staff if you're not, particularly if you're in a dynamic situation? And I, I will just use this to extend this. Is, this isn't just in this area. The increased need for more code enforcement and monitoring across our development proposals and what we're doing, all of these things, uh, with, those are all new requests on our existing staff. And that, 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 that implies one of two things. Either we have people who are just sitting around without enough to do, and thank God we have these new requests so that they can do it, or two, that there are amazing technological breakthroughs that could do, that could facilitate us doing those things without necessarily needing more people. So I don't have any conclusions, but I would basically say we're in an era of both um, uh, increased uh, work efforts across a range of things and increased desires for reporting and accounting. And I don't care if we're in a hospital or uh, what, any sort of situation. The more you have this sort of thing, I'm sure almost everybody would say there is a workload kind of impact. And I would just say it even here, that there's no strangers in this room here tonight. So the people here are the people you always see here. It's not like suddenly you say, who's this new person here reporting on this? These are the person who have these jobs all day long, and they're doing all of these things. So every time I ask them to do something, and every time you ask them to do something, it's either more hours or something gets substituted out. And we're, we're reaching a point where we have to have a process where we can rationally say, it, uh, here's, here's the cost, here's the benefit, we're trying to achieve, here's the cost of what it is to achieve it. And that's all, that's all we're trying to highlight is we're taking these requests seriously. We don't want to just do an audit and then backslide into old practices. We want to be sure we can sustain them. And, you know, if we get to a point where we can say, wow, there's a totally systems and technological solution, you guys know this. We're very involved in trying to invest in technology and new system changes to do stuff. On the other hand, we can't pretend to be able to be accountable and not be able to actually account for stuff, and sometimes that will require some staffing changes. It may mean an increase, it may need a, mean a, um, uh, a, a reorganization, or it may mean we say, well, you know what, we're gonna wanna do this, we have to stop doing this other thing we're doing over here for those people to be able to do it. It really, that's reality, and if, if ultimately next year with finance I have to, I don't know what it is, we do field trips and stuff to see if we really know what we're talking about, but I think that we got a lot of folks who are maxing out. Good news, bad news is I've gone through similar things in the private sector with physical inventories and how to manage them and, and uh, the trade-offs that go along uh, with having better systems. And so one of the things that um, that needs to go along with any increase in labor in certain areas is a balanced comparison that looks at uh, what savings. 
Now, some of those savings actually are along the lines of what Council Member Holman had talked about. When you have clarity as to where things are and how to go about things, there are system efficiencies that are gained from that. Now, how those offset against additional steps that may be taken, uh, you have to look at. But it's not all increases, even on the system side. And then aside from that, we've got not only the uh, reduce waste that we should have because if you don't have excess obsolete inventory, you run it a little bit leaner, you don't have excess obsolete inventory. That's, that's a, um, uh, a cash expense that's not labor. Uh, you don't, if we're having better controls and less loss of materials. Um, when you uh, don't have as much waste or loss, you actually have less ordering and purchasing. Um, when we have a uh, less inventory, we have less cost of funds to maintain that inventory. Um, and that's not just our invested amount, but it's, it's the value of those dollars. Um, and, um, and so all these things aren't necessarily technology breakthroughs, although there may be some efficiencies in technology that also reduce those costs. So when we, when we do look at it, uh, I hope that we're going to look at the, uh, the whole picture. That doesn't mean that you get in there and are looking at every one of these things and trying to identify down to the dollar what the balances are in these equations. But there should be, uh, if you're going to come and say kind of anecdotally, well, we had a bunch more costs, we think, in labor, well, then you should also say anecdotally, but we had a, these areas where we had fewer expenses, and here's our best appraisal of what, what those reductions are. And then we, we net it out, and we might see that, okay, we got a bit more labor costs, and it was clearly offset by uh, these other savings. Or we might say, no, nah, this, this really uh, is a net increase in expenses, but in an organization like this, it's a necessity. And we might say that. Or we might say some of these things are a waste. Say, you know, for we spent $100 chasing a dollar. Uh, and those things we probably don't want to do. And, and then we're transparent and say, we will accept that amount of risk or inefficiency because it's just not good expenditure of the people's money. So, um, you know, going along with what Councilmember Burt said, and, and um, uh, I guess my earlier comment too is like, there's no, and I'll just speak directly to the staff that's here. It's like there's no, uh, no thought on my part. And I don't think there's any thought on this committee's part or council's part that. Um, council would want people to be overworked. What we're looking at here is more of a, a systems approach where if there's more efficiency, there's more productivity, not just from a systems uh, perspective, but there's more personal productivity, which makes one feel more effective, more productive, and there's a job satisfaction in that too. So it's weighing all of those things. It isn't, I just don't want it to be misunderstood that we just think that, you know, more, 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 and more. It's just we need to rationalize and justify you know, while we're hopefully making things better for the organization, we're making things better for staff, and that if there's need for more staff, then it just needs to be justified. And that's the message. It's not a pylon. I, you know, anybody else can agree or not to that, but I just want to be clear that that's the message. I just don't want that message to out loud that it sounds as though we used to be kind of casual and, you know, sort of, we put things down on yeah. paper, we didn't quite keep track of them. And now that we're really doing it and doing a great job, it's going to cost a good deal more. And I think, I think Pat addressed it well. Yeah. You know, uh, there is some balance within this that you're going to be looking at to decide where it goes. But there ought to be some streamlining within this as you go to a completely automated and integrated system that, that should be able to make it uh, far more efficient and uh, explainable to the public. I think those are excellent points that you have made. Uh, I, I think all four of you, uh, I think there's a strike, of, uh, 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 including the city manager, sorry. I want to make sure he understood that. I, 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 I we had any <laughs> 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 
I think there's there's definitely a story to be told, and we got to strike the balance. And maybe my comments were a little he heavy on the on the controls because we're so emphasized on, on trying to put those controls in place. But we've had those discussions before. If uh, some of you were on the committee, maybe uh, maybe only one of you was actually on the committee where we discussed procurement cards, and where there was a recommendation back then to add a position to review every single transaction. And we said, that's fine, but that's going to cost about $100,000, and how much are we protecting? So back to the points you're making, we got to prove to you that it, in order for us to make that investment, it's worth it because we're protecting X dollars. Lisa talked about having a threshold of 100. Well, maybe come back to you and say, you know what, it's got to be 1,000, because anything below that, it's not worth protecting uh, with the dollar that it would cost. And so it is, you know, I think it's important, the message that, we're, that it, I think we're all, I believe in agreement with it. We got to measure our risk and see what we can afford to ensure that we protect the assets in the best way possible. And uh, now I will s speak for a second to say I think you guys are taking the right approach. Uh, if you guys had come today and said today we need more staff, um, I, you know that that would have never flown. Uh, but I think coming back and saying, hey, we've identified uh, improved processes. We're just in the process of implementing them. Uh, let us implement them. Analyze the results. Uh, as, as everybody said so far, you know, weigh the benefits and the costs of those new processes and then decide what uh, makes sense. I mean, that's what I'm hearing from you guys, and I think that's the right process. I think it was good to have this conversation so that you guys know what the expectations will be six months from now or, or eight months from now when you come back to council, um, you know, if you do uh, have a request for more staff. But at this stage, I think that we're all on the same page. Um, and with that, let's, let's move on to the next. Uh, so um, Nancy's going to talk about inventory turnover, which was a point that Councilmember Bird made last time. Was, and so she's going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about security, which um, Public Works and Jamie may want to, uh, John, and Jamie's also been involved, mainly John. So with that, Nancy. Thank you. Nancy Nagel, Senior Management Analyst, right? That's my new title. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You can thank the management comp study. Um, so last meeting, there was ex there was a lot of concern expressed about inventory turnover ratios, both in terms of that they were um, that they were low, and also that they ha were tr they had trended downward between 2007 and 2013. So we looked into that. One of the con the big concern was like we did not have an explanation for that. So um, first of all, we looked at the the, the inventory turns, which for, was a blended rate, it was a 64% turnover, which is not an imp it's not a good looking number, we, we agree. And we spoke with the auditor and they were very forthcoming about their calculations and um, one issue was that they, that was a blended ratio for both of the warehouses. Is it too tight? And if you split the warehouses, it was 78% uh, turnover ratio for MSC warehouse and 25% for water quality. And that brings us back to an operating, uh, you know, a business reality of the water quality plant, which is that they, they want to stock every replacement spare part that exists because if they go down, there's serious trouble and it's cost serious money, not just for this city, but all their partner cities. So they, they stock it. <laughs> and so there's not going to be a lot of movement if you're, in terms of turnover ratio if you're looking at the entire inventory value and how much gets turned as, as a ratio. So that's why theirs is low. The other issue is that the auditor was wrapping up his report in April of 2013. So he took the numbers that were available as of April 19th and that's what you saw. But there's a lot that happens in the year end. And so if, as of June 30th, that 64% became 78%. So that blended rate became 78%, which translated to 91% turnover ratio at the MSC warehouse and 33% at the water quality warehouse. So it actually was not bad, turns out, in 2013. Which brings us to the other point, which was why did it go down from 2007 when it was an 88% turnover rate to the reported 64% or as of year end, 70 uh, it, what I say, 78%. Why did it come down 10% in, the, in those seven years, six years? So um, we looked, if this was in the CMR too, I mean, the, it turns out that 2007 number was, was kind of an outlier and that the very next year it jumped down by 10% and then the following year down another 10% and that the average over those seven years 
was like 71, 72%, so that the, the uh, 2013 number wasn't actually below the average of those seven years. And then just, just one more note that um, as far as like the underlying issues, why is, why, why is turnover, what can we do to return, to increase our, our returns? That goes back to the, the issue of obsolete stock and slow moving stock and we've done this huge two stage clean out that Joe described first, you know, Scott sends out lists to everyone of anything that's over three years, it hasn't moved, why, which is obsolete and it's, it's not easy. You have to like rally a lot of different people and then they respond and we got, you know, in the end, great response and a lot of cooperation and a lot of time spent. And then we did that again with stuff that moved, that hadn't moved for a year or longer. So there's a lot of cleanup that's happened. And, um, and then we will be doing these quarterly checks to go back and, um, and identify any parts that aren't moving and why and do you really still need these and have the specs changed, et cetera. So we should see, you know, good, good turns in the future. So Nancy, just quickly, could you address the idea of that we're going to establish a new base for the inventory turnover count and sure. the minimums? What do the minimums represent? We're going to exclude those from the inventory. Well, you call it minimum. So I call it the you call it minimum. So equipment. another thing that we did with the processing of slow stock is we also asked everyone, can you identify the parts that you s that you ask for that you we have for you that are really only for emergency, so, and then we'll code them so that in the future. We can, um, we can spit out inventory turn ratios, but we can also spit out a version that excludes the emergency only stock that's really not expected to move. And it's a little tricky because some, you know, like, yeah, but so that's the idea. So we're going to. Any questions on that? Yes, there are questions about the turn. Yes. One question. Uh, Nancy, you mentioned that. Um, 2007 was a high year and kind of an anomaly at 88. So what was 2006? And then in 2000, uh, in April of 2013, it was 64, but then it jumped up to 77 and a half in 2013 of June, just in two months. So, so, oh. so there, there are pretty dramatic shifts there. Does any idea of yes. why? So first, um, let me answer the second part. So the April, so the April 19th number of 64 percent, which then jumped, like you said, just jumped to 78. It's it looks like a two month jump, but it's not. It's that, um, and I I'm going to say this all wrong because I'm not an account. I don't I don't do the accounting year end stuff. There's a lot of transactions that are sort of looked at very carefully at the year end and sort of corrected and put in in their right place. And so I think the year end, those two months, it looks really different from two months earlier before all that. Reconciling was done. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not using the right terms. So it's really a so it's really a jump then from April 2012, excuse me, June of 2012 to June of 2013. Right. But it still jumps from 66 to 78. Right, and it, there are, there are fluctuations, and um, we're starting to look at. We haven't. We don't know yet. I mean, it's a good we're, jump. It's just like, is there something that right? I mean, why did it jo go from eighty-eight down to seventy-eight? Or yeah, and that's vice, yeah, the vice And there's there's well. definitely some timing issues. I mean, I think that's most of it. I know that um, yeah, there there Kim and I, our SAP person, were speculating, and there's more to dig in on this. I don't I don't know how much time we'll spend digging into past years, but as we report out to you, um, as we said, we'll do annually turnover ratios, we'll be looking more deeply into, well, why is it, why is it higher now? Why is it lower now? You are and aware I'm of one large order at the end of the year in the gas area? We are aware, excuse me for interrupting, but there we are aware of one large order at the end of the year that may have enhanced for the gas fund that may have enhanced the turnover rate. Right? You thinking of 2014? Oh, the bottom. Oh, I'm hitting the bottom, okay. I think that was 2014 now. I'm sorry? The gas order may have been 2014 and uh -oh. this is 2013. Oh, I thought it was at the end. Oh, you're right, Nancy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Stand correct. And I'm not looking for um, absolute forensics. I'm just wondering if anything had turned up or had been highlighted that would make you think that, like, like what you just mentioned, except that's for the next year. So, yeah, it's all right. that 
that as part of SAP? No. No, not at all. I mean so, the system in the in a broader sense. Got it. So is there any name to that system or you just mean systemized? I mean systemized. Just it's in the policy and procedures. Okay. We have, yeah. Whenever we're discussing this, I always think of um, those large box stores that apparently things extraordinarily inventory. So that the minute something comes out, you know, and you check it out, then they know they need to restock it. And I realize we're not quite that sophisticated, nor do we have that kind of, 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 of budget to work with. Well, but it's always mm -hmm. fascinating. Walmart, I forgot which one does it, but Nordstrom, well, was we do. Nordstrom's, you know, everyone with the skew knows exactly mm -hmm. where, and I'm always amazed at how well they can identify where everything is. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm not the expert in SAP, but when an order is placed, it does trigger, an, when an order from a department is placed in the system, it does trigger information that goes to our purchasing area to replenish. So there is an automatic um, situation there within a system to order those parts, similar to what would be an inventory system in, you know, Kmart or if they still exist and uh, other places <laughs> like that. So. in the past. So what you're saying is going forward, we hope to systemize this either in yes, the system or we actually mm -hmm. will have a SAP type of tracking mechanism. Right. So you know where everything is all the time. Right. So I think Probably you're yes. I think you're correct. We have system and systematized and Absolutely. John Hospitalier, uh, Assistant Director of Public Works for Public Services Division. Good evening, Council. Um, obviously, I'm here to. John is in a role yeah, yeah, yeah. As of Welcome. July. <laughs> Thank you. Um, some of my thunder was stolen by Joe and, and uh, the rest of the party, but I'll bear with me. <laughs> Um, since February, Public Works has rekeyed the water quality control plant warehouse and added a security camera and a card reader at the main door. Uh, the IT storage area at the MSC Building A has been caged, as you know, uh, with uh, uh, the new cage fen fencing extended to the ceiling and uh, secured with card access. Um, and um, we also added to the storage entrance door at City Hall and Level A a card reader. Um, to address that uh, identified security issue. Uh, all of the exterior doors at city facilities, with the exception of uh, Building C and the MSC, have been rekeyed uh, with the new Sledge Primus Key system. Uh, Primus keys are a one-of-kind configuration made or coded specifically for Palo Alto. The manufacturer guarantees uh, no other organization will be given this code or configuration. Um, the MSC, Building C, will be rekeyed at the end of the calendar year, uh, and detailed records for all the keys uh, uh, in the city um, has been maintained uh, by facility staff on that new sledge Primus system. Uh, basically, there's only three people that will have access to this information. Uh, card access has been installed on at least one exterior door on each facility with the exception of the fire stations. Um, these are now uh, over 150 card access doors uh, installed in city facilities, uh, which is greatly, which greatly reduces the need for uh, issued hard keys. Um, after updating and refining our access records uh, for the store's warehouse, only 44 staff members currently possess access cards to the MSC store's warehouse for 24-7 access. Uh, public Works staff has collaborated with or uh, will collaborate with the city's OES director uh, for recommendations on, and guidance towards uh, a citywide risk assessment. And uh, the MSC camera system upgrade is underway currently. Uh, we anticipate that we'll complete this project by the first of the year um, at the MSC. 
The fleet uh, access system has now been removed from all vehicles, um, and we are now using an, the, a, a, the AMAG technology system. Uh, this new system has the ability to track when vehicles gain access to the entrance gate. And that's all I have. Okay, thanks, Sean. Unless there are questions um, on next steps, which is slide number 10, I, I think um, we've gone through much, much of this already. Um, we'll continue to bring material categories into SAP when possible, such as looking at bringing transformers potentially into SAP versus a separate system. Um, we will um, continue to monitor and do blind counting, which was part of the audit. We, um, and then um, we've talked about security of assets. We will continue to look at the uh, best tools that are available as long as they pass cost benefit. Uh, I dare not go on the next to last <laughs> bullet. And, um, and city, otherwise there'll be the fourth time that I mentioned it. So I don't, I don't wanna cross that barrier. That, that, that benchmark. Citywide training, we will, where requested, do training in SAP if, necess if necessary. Uh, talked about a risk assessment. Um, I, I, I do want to say that one of the keys to um, uh, more efficiencies, uh, not having excess inventory is really good communication among the departments and, and utilities between engineers and between the operations staff. Likewise, feedback from our, um, our, our warehouse supervisor as to get sending out reports on redundant, you know, redundant items or excess inventory. So there really needs to be good communication to, to make sure that we're using our assets properly and minimize costs. Um, so we've talked about inventory turnover, and with that, i turn it over to Lalo to conclude. Thank you. Um, again, I wanted to thank the members of the team behind me that uh, are helping us in collaborating in making the changes that we need to make and uh, having their support and acceptance and the accountability for this to move forward. I also wanted to acknowledge Harriet and her team. Um, we work with them closely since the last meeting we had with you. There were over 20 formal meetings within the departments. Uh, there were many informal meetings and several meetings with Harriet and her team. Uh, even though she has not been here that long, I have been finding that it's uh, the beginning of a beautiful relationship and collaboration. Uh, so I, I feel confident that we can continue to do that uh, and given us some guidance and we've taken that into consideration as well. And I think uh, it's, it's, you know, I didn't mean it to sound negative and when I made my comments about an auditing process. I just was trying to state that there are some uh, steps that, that get added. Uh, but I believe that <coughs> it makes us a better organization uh, because not everybody has an audit, internal auditor that is segregated. And uh, while it sometimes it makes us look like there's something wrong, it just makes us better. And I think that's where we're heading. Uh, and to conclude, we have, if you're interested, no requirement some pictures if you wanted to have a sense of what it looks like some of the facilities we have a couple pictures but it's it's like like i said it's not necessary may i just um add something to that mr chair um i just wanted to restate again that um you know we ask for this audit um lalo in particular um and uh you know really employed the city auditor as an internal consultant really to help with this. So again, I, I would echo the, um, uh, obviously it began under, um, before Harriet got here, but um, I do think that the way that the uh, current auditor is uh, working, not, not relinquishing any of her and her office's oversight responsibilities and the requirements uh, that her profession puts forward, but um, I think there's clearly a sense that there's a lot of alignment between what we're trying to achieve. Secondly, um, I hope it's been apparent that we've taken your requests and direction very seriously. You were very pointed, you know, six plus months ago um, about this. And I, I would hope that both the depth of response, but the range of how we've approached this has been, is atypical. 
Um, I don't think we typically have this level of distributed involvement from each department here. Um, so I think it, it symbolizes or reflects both the fact that um, many different departments were involved, but, but the fact actually that these kind of system changes require shared responsibility for those changes to be able to take place. So I, I just echo what, what Lalo uh, was saying. And, uh, you know, we're not done yet, as, as was indicated at the very beginning of the, of the presentation. But, you know, I think we've made uh, really meaningful progress. And our interest, again, is, you know, not just getting a passing grade on the audit and going back to where we were about how we, how we you know, set a new um, uh, threshold for performance in these areas and how we would then still continue to process improvements going forward. So thanks. Thank you guys very much. Um, thank you, Lalo. Thank you, Joe. Uh, thanks, Jim. Thanks to the staff for all the work that you guys have put in. Um, and now I'll kick it open to colleagues for questions. Okay. Um, yes, I acknowledge and appreciate how much work's gone into getting to getting this far. And obviously, it's taken a lot of collaborative effort. Um, I have a question for City Auditor, who was, you know, the partner in this, and just want to know if you want to come up and. I just want to know if you have any any comments, uh, questions, or suggestions. And I have one question about the um, policy, process, and procedure for inventory management. That's attachment E. And you know what I have to relate this to relate to here is on packet page 55. It talks about process guidelines, and from a planning perspective, if it's guidelines, it's like kind of mushy. So should it be process standards, or I don't know what what is typical here and just do you have any other comments about anything that's been discussed this evening or um, or again these um, uh, this policy process and procedures document um, sure thank you if the red light is oh there okay all right Harriet Richardson city auditor um, first thing I would like to comment that we do really appreciate the approach that they took with developing a plan instead of um, instead of simply saying where were the individual problems and let's go fix them I think the holistic approach is going to be the best approach for the city and they did work with our office um, very closely and we did review the plan that they had and um, provided input on what we thought so yes we do agree with the guidelines those are considered consistent with what was in the GAO executive guide that was used in the audit as um, criteria for saying what they should be doing. So um, as far as all that goes, we, um, we definitely agree. One comment we do have is that we want to make sure moving forward as they're giving the inventory counts and specifying what those rates are, that it's clear. I think, you know, during the audit, we weren't really able to separate what is um, it movable inventory versus what to, what is the long-term stock that you have to keep for emergency purposes and I think making clear that division between those two types of inventory and tracking the turnover on the things that really should be turning over is going to be uh, important and I think as they do that you're not going to be able to compare it to these old numbers because you're going to be comparing two different types of things. So I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind. Um, as they move forward, I think also recognizing as they start moving some things that are currently tracked as non-valuated stock into SAP, that's going to affect those rates. So you're going to see some changes that you may not be able to consistently compare even once you do know it's all the turnover type of inventory that you may not be able to consistently compare year to year until they get to a point where they've stabilized that. In general, Harriet, if you don't mind a more <coughs> subjective question, as you go ahead with your own audit this year, is this going to provide a lot of clarity to you? M my own audit, I'm not sure what you. Meaning, as, as you go forward, you're going to do another audit? You know, oh, the, the meters audit? Right, yes. So that, me that audit is actually almost done. And we're um, using similar types of criteria for it about how you track and um, 
the, that one is more about not just managing the inventory, but also the procurement process, the inventory process, and the retirement process. But yes, um, definitely similar type of guidance for following um, inventory management. Because we've been um, much more diligent, perhaps, I'm not sure if that's the best word, but certainly more um, determined to really have very good information in return for the questions that we had last February. And as we go forward with the other kinds of, whether it's your audits, whatever it may be, I'm hoping we'll follow the same process. I think we've got a good process in place. Um, one of the things I've heard mentioned a couple of times tonight is the concept of doing some risk assessments. And I think that's an important concept to carry through all city processes. It's part of the general internal control framework to do risk assessments. And so I think um, as the city moves forward with thinking about how they improve processes, even if they don't have an audit, assessing the risk. And as um, Council Member Burt said, not spending $100 to chase down a dollar, you, you look at managing that risk and whether you you own it, you accept it, you share it, you mitigate it, whatever you choose to do with it is going to be important. Thanks. Thank you. Huh? Is this wrap up for everything? Yeah. 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 Um, well, then, this is uh, both a thank you to Harriet and your staff who uh, did the excellent job in the initial audit, and then um, an expression uh, to all the staff who has come forward with this, uh, not just implementation plan, but um, high level of implementation to date. And um, uh, this is uh, really along the lines of what we were looking for, and it's, a, uh, a, I think, a real positive direction. Um, it will be interesting to then, once we have these things in place, to really look at, at these issues we were talking earlier on the, on the cost trade-offs and, and how they all balance out. Um, but I just want to uh, say that I, I really appreciate all the effort that everybody's put into uh, bringing this around. Great. Well, I will second what, what Pat just said. Um, and want to just make a couple points uh, one is uh, n you know to definitely emphasize training of, of staff on these new processes and those who weren't um, used to using SAP in the past or maybe weren't using it as much as they um, could have or should have been you know it's something that I've seen recently at work and and see it in other contexts you can have the best product or process in the world, but if the people who are supposed to be implementing it don't understand it or aren't comfortable with it, they'll quickly revert back to what they were doing in the past, and then the whole thing's worthless. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, don't, don't skimp on the training element um, for our staff. Uh, the second comment I was going to make had to do with the staffing issue, and as Joe said, I won't, I won't touch that again. Um, and, uh, but I think we had a good conversation about that earlier. And uh, the third is just following up on, on Jim's point of, you know, let's not have this be a peak, uh, but let's have this be kind of a new plateau in terms of, um, you know, what our goals are and what we can achieve in terms of inventory management uh, in the city. And it's, you know, I think the report that you guys have put together and the work you've done to date shows how seriously everyone's taking it. Um, so it definitely shows a lot of promise for, for you know, permanent implementation and, um, you know, being really productive for the city uh, moving forward. So with that, I don't know if anybody else has any last questions or comments thank you everybody um, for who, who have worked for the past eight months yeah yeah thank you guys chair Berman I, I wanted to acknowledge Joe and Nancy for leading Please. the effort so thank you for thank all you Joe work. thank you Nancy yes. may I just make one other comment about the staff before yeah. we leave and before they leave so you know when we get to this point it all sounds so kind of kumbaya and, and uh, uh, aligned but you know the process as you know and anything working through this is you know there's a lot more head banging and some conflict that takes place I mean it, it isn't because people are resistant just to be resistant but they're sort of ingrained practices that have existed for a long time and when people have to change any behavior or system it signals gosh I've got to let go of something and pick some some new approach up so when Lalo mentions 20 plus meetings across this, this sector, and this is, 
you know, again, uh, we actually function like a, actually a very large complex organization, even though there's a thousand, only a thousand employees, there's so many different parts. So I do think it's testimony to the fact that, um, you know, I think at times there were little mini forced marches during um, this phase and stuff. Um, but again, I think that in the end, because everybody was pulling together and there was a lot of clarity about what the objective was, both from the auditor's audit and from the committee's direction to us, which was very clear. Uh, so it also uh, resonated uh, for me, reverberated would be a better word for me <laughs> over the six months and when I was checking in with everybody. Um, you know, it, it took, took a lot of work collectively to get here. Um, uh, hopefully everyone, uh, I want to I support the positive comments of the committee to reinforce the fact that this sort of collaboration pays off. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, guys. Um, so do we? D you had made a motion uh, in February that it would go uh, have it go to council, but they would go on consent. Yep. That was your motion. Yeah, yeah, I, as well it should. So I will. So I'll move that the response, the staff's updated response to the auditor's inventory management audit, um, be referred to full council for adoption on the consent calendar. Um, any comments? I don't have any. Nope. 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 All in favor? Aye. So that passes unanimously. Thank you for the reminder. Um, and I think the next item on the agenda is Thank you. future meetings and agendas. Yes, uh, we do not have any items on the tentative schedule for the 21st of October. So our recommendation is that we cancel the meeting so we would, since we only have a few days to make packet. Um, as you're aware, we had canceled the November 4th meeting uh, since it's election night. So our next scheduled meeting with a tentative agenda is the 18th of November. And that's when we're bringing to you the year-end financials. Uh, we will have the external auditors uh, as well as uh, Harriet and her team uh, here with us to explain to you uh, what our financial position is. Uh, it is a, a positive position, so be happy to report that and give you the details then. And we'll also provide you information on the CIP um, uh, matrix that we do at year end uh, and give you status of CIP projects, uh, as well as the use of gas cap and trade compliance revenues. The Utilities Department uh, is bringing you a report on that, so we have a pretty full agenda that night. Um, the next meeting that we have an agenda for is December 2nd, and that we will give you the first quarter results. And I have a tentative title that I cannot explain to you what it is. It's Community Solar Program. I'm not sure what it entails, but that's coming from utilities, and we have that on the agenda. And then we'll close out the year with the December 16 meeting where we present to you the long-range financial forecast. Um, and that's all we have for now on the tentative agenda. Great. So you're canceling the 21st as well? Is that uh, that's correct? what we're recommending to the committee since we do not have any items. Okay. Unless you just want to hang out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Karen. So I need to double check, but um, November 18, I'm not sure. Liz, are you going to Austin, League of Cities? Yes, I am. And I have to, I, I thank you, Karen, because my. Like, What's the date of that? I'm dead, so I don't, I, I can't pull up my calendar. Let me borrow my, my neighbor's calendar here. Oh, so I just want to make sure oh, about that, and the then dates. I just need the dates sure. in November. And then also, the animal shelter has been hanging out there for quite a while. So l let me, well, the vice mayor looks at her calendar. I can tell you that the city manager. I did ask about this one, and the city manager is working with a consultant and, and doing outreach with the stakeholders, and that's. Right what they're doing right now to do an assessment and then report back to you. So they're not ready to give a date because they're waiting for the gathering of the information with the stakeholders. Can we maybe get an update uh, with, with a little more clarity as to, you know, how long they think that process is going to take and, um, yeah. you know, when we can expect to, to get a little more information? A little yes, more I, I will ask the city manager to either provide me or have somebody send the information to the committee. Perfect. And Karen, I wish I could tell you, but I, I without my own 
Well, <laughs> I was going to say, mine wasn't going to help you much. No, I, I perhaps have the exact date. So, Wait, um, hang on. It seems like it was on a weekend. Does that sound right? No, it's during the week. Oh. Uh, November 5 through 11? No, that doesn't seem right. No. Uh, it may be early. Yeah. I, th I think it's um, I think it's earlier, but I just want to make sure so we're not all. Anything here on your calendar? Or we can we can. Do you want to take it offline and then? We'll if Karen can't find it in the next 20 seconds. I'll find it shortly. As soon as I can find it. The internet. Tomorrow I get a new phone, so. That's exciting. That's a lot of time. It's one of the most frustrating things. So why don't we take it offline? And uh, <laughs> so, so, so the, we'll the, get back to you. Okay, but just so I, if I find it myself, that there's two of you that are out that that night. Then, if that's the date, out as well. Yes. Okay. okay. So yes. Okay. So okay. Could I just go back to the 21st in the animal shelter? That's not ready for prime time. That that is correct. Okay. Um, I, what I committed to do is have the city manager either give me the update or send the update from his office on the status what I was uh, when, when I inquired I was told that there we have hired a consultant that's doing uh, outreach to the stakeholders and uh, they're waiting for the completion of that outreach in order to schedule a, a, an information uh, or uh, schedule the item back with uh, the committee Ah, okay. It starts on the 18th. It starts on the 18th. Okay. So will you guys take a look? Do me a favor. Will you two yeah, take a look at the what? 18th through the what? So I'm going to make a suggestion. I'm going to I'm going to make a suggestion. Will you guys take a look at the schedule for it? See if you're planning on going out then or going out and the day later. Then, so I'll probably go a day later. I usually don't go the beginning. That's and that's unless it takes forever to get to Austin and unless there's a committee meeting that's on. <laughs> well, let's. Unless, unless, unless. I, I just don't know. I'd love to give you all the information. Uh, so, will the two of you go, let the two me of us know? Will get back to you. Yeah, perfect. That? that sounds perfect. Right. We'll be, we'll be getting back to you. I, I appreciate it. So the the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>